Hello and welcome to PSD Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak and today I'm going to talk about how to integrate Lightroom into your Photoshop workflow. These two applications can work really well hand in hand. You just need to make sure that you set up everything properly the way you want to use them. Lightroom is mainly for photographers to organize their photos and to develop them using the camera raw settings. But it can also be used together with Photoshop because there are some limitations that you just can't achieve in Lightroom but you can easily do in Photoshop. One good example is adding text or also doing some more precise retouching. I'm going to show you some examples in this tutorial, but mainly what I would like to explain in this video is how to integrate the two applications and what are the ways to go back and forth between them. I am using Lightroom 4 and Photoshop CS6, but these features will work with previous versions as well. First of all, what you should do in Lightroom is to go to the preferences and check the external editing tab. Here you will see the options that Lightroom will use to be able to communicate with Photoshop. So whenever you edit a photo from Lightroom uh, in Photoshop, it will be used as a Photoshop file, so PSD file format, which you can always switch to TIFF if you want. It will use this color space, Pro Photo RGB, and it will use 16 bits per channel and 240 uh, PPI for the resolution. There's an important message here that whenever you save a file back from Photoshop and you would like to use it in Lightroom, make sure that maximize compatibility is checked. So it's good to check that and keep checked uh, and that make sure that Lightroom will be able to see and read those PSD files that you save from Photoshop. The other useful option is to stack the Photoshop version with the, ori with the original camera raw file. And that's the option that you can find here. So stack with original. Another option which you can set here is that if you have another application that you use for external editing your photos from Lightroom, you can also set that up. So you can always choose a second additional external editor. I'm going to focus on Photoshop, so I'm going to close this now. And if I right click on an image, I can show you the options that we have. First of all, we have the option to edit this file in Photoshop. And then we have open it as a smart object, merge it to panorama, merge it to HDR and open it as layers. So these are the options I'm going to go through. First of all, before I would open this image, I'm going to make some changes here in Lightroom. So we can see a whole workflow, how we would do this, uh, how we would use these two applications together. So I'm going to go to the develop settings and here I'm going to add two completely non-destructive changes. I would like to add some brightness uh, or exposure at the bottom of this image. So I'm going to use the uh, option here called graduated filter. It's a tool and I'm going to increase the exposure and maybe even increase the shadows. So now I'm going to click and drag. So there you have a nice bright uh, foreground. I might even add a bit more exposure like that. And then I'm going to click on new and draw another one from the top down. But instead of increasing the exposure here, I'm going to reduce the exposure a bit. So darkening the sky, something like that, just to increase the drama. I'm going to add, add some contrast. I'm going to increase saturation and I might increase a bit the highlights. Actually, let's just see. Yeah, probably increase the highlights a bit and reduce the shadows or yeah, something like that. That will be good. Let's see before and after. I just turn this off and on. So you can already see with these two graduated filters, we actually did quite a big change on the image. Now, this was the thing that we could do very easily here in Lightroom. You won't find similar features in Photoshop. Obviously, you can uh, recreate these in Photoshop by using adjustment layers and uh, uh, gradient masks but uh, it was just much easier to do it in Lightroom and everything is completely non-destructive 
because whenever I go back to the tool, I can still find both of these and separately make changes to the values I assign to them. So it was easier to do it here, but let me go now to the options and see what else we can do in Photoshop. How would I take this further in Photoshop? I can right click on the image and choose edit in and I can choose just simply edit in Photoshop. Let's see what happens if I do that. I will have this dialog box where it says I can do three different things. I can edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments or just simply edit a copy or edit the original. So if I would like to go to Photoshop with already these changes that I did here, I can use the first one. If I would like to go to Photoshop without the changes, but with a separate file, a copy, I can choose that. Or I can completely ignore the changes and just simply take this file into Photoshop. I most of the time choose the first option. So let's see what happens if I click on edit. Photoshop will open up with this file. And the way we set it up in Lightroom, that's exactly how it comes into uh, Photoshop. It has 16 bit depth per channel and it has 240 uh, resolution and it is going to be a Photoshop file once I want to save it. So what am I going to do here? I will probably just add a uh, text, maybe use the type tool and then just click and type in sunrise in the mountains. I'm going to make this bigger and we can create a cool effect by making the text a little bit even bigger and set it to a nice color from the image. I'm going to use the color picker tool and uh, bring a bright color, bright blue color from the sky like that. Maybe even add an uh, outer glow on it. So I'm going to just add the outer glow and for the outer glow I'm going to use a purple color, bright purple, increase the size a bit and the spread, reduce the opacity, just a subtle effect like that. And uh, we can also check if we reduce the field opacity, the way it looks. That's already an interesting effect, but what I would like to do is maybe use a different font. I think I'm going to go with Tryon Pro, and uh, I would like to have this text coming out behind the mountains. So first of all, I am going to use a text warp. I press Command T or Control T on PC, use the free transform uh, or the warp option. And here I choose arc and just reduce the bend. So I'm going to use something like that. Sunrise in the mountains. And we can make this a little bit smaller, the whole text maybe make the word the a bit even smaller and holding down alt shift and up arrow you can um, change the baseline it's called baseline shift so i moved it a little bit up so if i want to move this a bit behind the mountains i just need to create a mask for it so i'm going to turn it off use the uh, quick selection tool and make a quick selection of these mountains Again, something which is you won't be able to do in uh, Lightroom. So we have the selection there. Make sure that this snowy peak is also selected. That's it. And now I'm going to turn the layer back on and click on creating a mask from this selection, that uh, icon here at the bottom. And I just need to invert the mask by pressing Command or Control I. And now the text is behind the mountains, or it looks like it's behind the mountains. And then if I unlink the mask and the layer, then I can select the layer and move it around without uh, changing my mask. So the mask stays in place. And then I can really fine tune where I would like to place uh, the text. So that looks quite nice. And I can add another uh, layer effect on it. I double click on it on the layer and choose gradient overlay and set this to multiply. So that will add a darker uh, bottom part on the text 
and uh, maybe change the scale to something like that and just drag it down so there's a slide shadow at the bottom that's something that you won't be able to do in Lightroom but here in Photoshop we could quite easily set this up and once I save this back so I go to file and choose save it will be immediately saved as edit PSD so it has the file name the original file name and uh, edit and it's a PSD file and if we go back to Lightroom you will see that we already have the Photoshop file here as well so if I go left there's the original uh, file and if I go to right there's the Photoshop file as well so Lightroom kept both of them together so whenever I go to uh, Photoshop from Lightroom it automatically comes back if I save it as a Photoshop file this way between Photoshop and Lightroom there's a connection and we create some edits in Lightroom and then we go to Photoshop and once we are ready there we can save it back and we, it will be available in Lightroom as well but we can also do adjustments to this uh, file the PSD file here in Lightroom so there's a really good connection between the two applications but what if I want to continue working on the image in Photoshop and still have some access to the original settings of the camera raw options so instead of coming, coming back to Lightroom I would like to make some changes while staying still in Photoshop if we want to do that we can do that by using a smart object so let me show you another image for example this one here I'm going to pick a color from her clothes just to uh, color balance the image and increase the exposure and if I right click on this choose edit in open a smart object in Photoshop then this will come up as already a smart object now if I make, on, uh, make any changes on this image let's just say I just change it flip it uh, vertically or horizontally let's just do it like that I was holding down alt and dragging one of the points on the side to the other side that's a quick way to flip the uh, whole selection and now if I double click on the thumbnail of this layer which is the smart object it will come up with the camera raw options which is the original image and all the options we set up in Lightroom will be available here so we can see that the temperature and tint has been changed the exposure is also raised up so we can make other changes like adding more light in the shadows and if I click on OK then all these changes will update here in Photoshop so that's another useful way to connect Lightroom with Photoshop that you bring all the camera raw editing power directly into Photoshop by creating a smart object and have that inside your Photoshop document so these are the two main ways to integrate the two applications and in other tutorials I will talk more about the panorama and HDR options if you found this useful make sure you join me next time as well and for now thanks a lot for your attention